Welcome to this edition of JHAG RC. Today we are going to be reviewing a Tamiya Heavy Dump 24th scale four wheel drive truck. And here it is in all of its beauty. Dump bed up, of course. It's a little dirty because I love running this little thing. And to be honest, who wants to see a clean dump truck? Dump trucks aren't clean. They're dirty. They're out on the construction sites. They're out on dirts. Nobody wants to see a clean dump truck. 24th scale, which 24th scale is actually kind of, I don't want to say misleading, but the reason that this is, it's the same footprint as a Wild Willy. And as a matter of fact, There's a wild willy right there to see for kind of size comparison, see if I can scoot back far enough. Well, it's hard to see on the camera, but it's very definitely small, especially compared to like a Traxxas Stampede. You can get the general idea on how much smaller that the GF01, that the heavy dump, is compared to a normal 10 scale. I think calling the dump truck a 24 scale is the same as saying a stampede is a 10 scale, as a T-Max is also a 10 scale, when they're clearly two different sizes. But... We have a realistic dump bed. It's got four pins in the back of it, and actually I'm going to unstill the body. Pop the pins out right quick. The dump bed itself comes off for battery changes. These little legs, little kickers right here are for the dump bed for stow. Whenever you run, those go back down, and the dump bed sits in its normal position just like that it features four-wheel drive this is built off the Tamiya's GF01 chassis which is uh, as far as I know stands for gear fetish <clears throat> because it has a mid-mounted motor and you can just kind of see right in here there's counter gears and idler gears and God knows what other kind of gears. As I know, there's a whole mess of them. This whole this little unit takes 26, I believe it is, ball bearings, or comes with bushings. You should upgrade to bearings while you're assembling everything. Front and rear differential, four wheel independent suspension, and if I'm not mistaken, it shares the same suspension components as the Wild Willy as the WRO2 chassis midship mounted uh, oh let's see turn 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 this unit comes with the Mabushi torque tuned silver can 540 which is actually a really really good fit for this truck right here uh, very snappy very peppy Independent or the um, sorry, the front suspension is also the same. Independent front, the servo sits in kind of a weird spot. The servo is off to the side, just kind of hanging there. It's got a bell crank down in there. And I'm going to pop these other two pins and we will get to the meat of it. It's hard to see, but the body has these little tabs right there that slip under into the chassis and then the front mounts into your body pins and that's how that's held. This body is also in to me a fashion an ABS plastic which is like a static model. Uh, the body itself it is a pretty pretty girthy pretty heavy body so it does make it a little more top heavy <clears throat> which helps with wheelies. Oh, uh, cell phone GPS on this unit. I've got it clocked at, I think it was about 14. Let's 
see here. Dump truck about 13 and a half miles an hour. I live on a hill, so that does kind of add a little bit. And I also had a cell phone strapped to it, which I don't know if that helps or hurts. But speed is probably between 12 and 14 miles an hour, <clears throat> I would say. You know, flat running. The steering on it, like I said, uh, like I said, the servo is hanging off to the side. There's your servo arm. The only complaint that I would have with the steering on this is that, to me, it does not give you high-tech adapters, which you have to run either an Airtronics or a Futaba-style servo, which isn't a big deal, but I had a high-tech servo picked out anyway. And I, <clears throat> so I went with a Duratrax, X, I'm sorry, SX-101, it's pretty much just a standard servo. I got it from Tower. I think they're like $6. I've actually had pretty good luck with it so far. I've got, I don't know, 20-ish packs, maybe a little more than that through it. Have not had a problem yet. Uh, in, a, in a relatively light machine like this, it seems like that servo is holding up just fine. But if you... I'll turn it side to side here, and you can kind of see the steering mechanism down in there. <clears throat> The wheel, same as a Wild Willy. The wheelbase on this is super short. It will cut uber, uber sharp turns. This thing will turn on a dime and give you a quarter back. <clears throat> when you're running, being a top-heavy machine, if, if you're going fast, cut the wheel hard, it is going to dump over a wheel tip. But, you know, that's pretty much true of any RC monster truck, so it's not... You know, you can plan for it. It's not that big of a deal, I don't think. The handling on this machine, it actually handles a lot better <clears throat> than you would think. It is very bouncy. Sorry. It is a very bouncy little hoppy machine. But with the GF01 chassis, the battery sits. There's these, there's the two pins and the electronics and everything raise up. And the battery slides in right here. The battery is actually, I think, a little bit lower than like a WR02, than the Wild Willy chassis. And it's, I believe it's sitting farther forward. Plus, instead of sitting in, you know, like that to tip the wheel bias, it's sitting in like this to help kind of plant that front end. It wheels, it will ride wheelies. It has absolutely no problem with that because it is a little wheelie machine. <clears throat> but the handling itself is actually pretty respectful for something of this size with friction shocks. I was really pretty pleasantly surprised. I was kind of worried at first that it was going to just be completely terrible. But <clears throat> the four wheel drive definitely helps. And the, the layout of the chassis definitely helps quite a bit. It won't climb, you know, vertical or anything like that. But a, um, I don't know, 30, 35 degree angle, you can pretty much roll straight up to it. And it will climb it as long as you're nice and careful with the throttle. Handling is pretty impressive for the machine. If you get real aggressive on the brake, when you're slowing down, it will definitely endo up. It will up and over if you're not careful, if you get too much. Oh, let me see. There it went. Now we're focused. You can definitely tell I like doing a lot of stoppies with it. And this big bumper, I mean, it's just made for it. The durability... On this little machine, it actually seems like it's really, really tough. I've jumped it. I've jumped it off my ramp. I haven't broken anything. I've bounced it off of mailboxes accidentally. I think I bounced it off a tree once. This, this huge, huge bumper along with the... Oop, there we go. The bumper being spring-loaded and being able to carry that much surface area on the front of that that definitely helps to deflect 
everything. It jumps a little bit better than you would think. It actually, it jumps pretty level, which I was surprised with. It, like, it made, like I said, this is actually a pretty well-balanced little chassis. I was shocked. There, there will definitely be another GFO one. <clears throat> Sorry, in my collection, probably before the end of the year, I would say. Um, let's see. For the money, I think this kit was a hundred and thirty-five dollars. Is what it was. Definitely, definitely worth it. One of the nice bonuses is, is to me, has gotten really good. There's. No more mechanical speed controls. You know, that's really a thing of the past. To me, it's really, really finally gotten on board with it. You're getting the Tamiya brushless capable, censored capable electronic speed control, the TBLE 02. I think I've got four of them running now, and I have not had a problem with them. The brush motors, brushless motors, uh, it's got the censored port, nickel metal, uh, it'll do lipo. Really seems like it's a pretty good little unit. And this being the heavy dump, like I said, comes with a torque tuned Mabushi motor, which, like a speed, is really it's pretty peppy. It's nice. That motor, I think, is a really good fit for this machine. I think it definitely could go more. I think you could probably put a mild brushless setup in it and probably really definitely have a whole lot of fun with it. The battery box will accept a. Oh, I'm going to try not to reach in front of you here. Oops, sorry, that was my beard. The battery box will accept a 5000 Duratrax Onyx LiPo. It's pretty tight. you got to kind of squeeze in on the clips a little bit, but it will accept it. And I'm assuming that that's just a standard size. I don't know the direct measurements. The fun factor on this machine, kind of like all my little Tamiya kits, Man, this thing is a 10. This little thing is a hoot. I love watching it bounce around. It is so fun. There is a world of handling difference between this machine and this little machine, especially for both of them being the same size. I love Willie. Don't get me wrong. But that GF01 chassis, this is a... Dude, this is a 10 for fun. I run a whole mess of packs through this thing. Completely, completely love this machine. Highly, highly recommended. Uh, this is my first GF01. This will not be my last one. Like I said, the only thing that I would, I guess if I had to nitpick something, I guess it would be that it still comes with plastic bushings. Especially considering that there's 26 in this kit itself. But... Bearings are pretty cheap. I mean, you know, you're getting the torque tune motor for it, and you're also getting the electronic speed control. So they're giving you the two most expensive things, I guess. So I, I, I would buy some bearings. I can buy some bearings for it. I can do that. But very, very fun little kit. There it goes. There's that. Very fun kit, and besides, who never wanted to drive a Tonka truck when they were a kid? That, that is your own little radio-controlled Tonka truck right there. Highly, highly recommended. Pick one up today. Uh, that's it for this review. Thanks for watching.